Well, hi there. Um, I'm Shelly Brisbane, keeper of the Cheryl Wheeler mailing list. And I'm really excited to share with you guys that I have captured Cheryl Wheeler in her native habitat. And she's going to sit and chat with us for a little while. And I'm going to make her tell me secrets or something. I don't know. Anyway, hi, Cheryl. How are you? <laughs> I am pretty good, Shelly. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks so much for uh, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> I it's been it's quite a time. I um I got a haircut today from Kathleen. It's her I'm first jealous. Haircut. I really I want a haircut so bad. <laughs> well, I, I mean, um, Kathleen, I it's so weird. She's never done it before. I have to give her an appendectomy tomorrow morning, and I've never done that either. So it's going to be tricky. But I thought she did all right on the haircut. But I got curly hair. Her hair is straight, and I'm doing hers tomorrow. So. Wish us luck. Just make sure the knives are nice and sharp and yeah. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, yeah. have the dog standing by to you know resuscitate you if need be. But anyways. one of the tricks with the haircut is keeping keeping you know watching the puppy and not letting him get too close because the puppy wants to get close to everything, right? Oh, of course <laughs> he wants everything in his mouth. Yeah, he's a little baby. Damn, he's getting big though. I've seen those pictures on Instagram, and that dog is not tiny anymore. He's going to be big. Uh, his brother Finn is about 80 pounds, and the breeder thinks uh, that Bix will be more like 90. He's a real oh, he's huge. Wow. All right. Well, if if he if he makes a cameo, we'll we'll you know be excited about that. But <laughs> uh -oh. so um, I I got this idea because uh, well, first of all, I should say on behalf of everybody on the list and who's ever had a chance to see them, thank you so much for all the videos that you've been uh -oh. making, singing songs uh -oh. to us. Kathleen just stuck Bix in his gray hair, so hold on. <laughs> That's a cameo. There's that was a cameo. So you were right, there. You go. You were no, thanking. I was, I was just saying thank you so much for making all the videos of of the songs and sending them almost every day. It seems like you're doing these. Oh, thank you for all you're doing, and thank everyone for listening. I got to tell you, this is just a. Uh, I don't. I don't need to go back to work. I love doing this. And um, I mean, I guess I suppose I will someday, but I'm really having a good time. Kathleen and I are having a lot of fun doing this uh, because she's having fun doing the backgrounds to all the songs and they change every time. And I'm doing, you know, people request songs and I'm just having a great time with it. We don't do it quite every day. If I don't really, if I don't feel like it, like we haven't done it yet today, so there's a good chance we won't do one today. But most days we do, and it's just a blast. And then you're so sweet to put them on YouTube. I can't even believe it. I'm just doing it because I want YouTube to come after me as a copyright violator, because every once in a while, <laughs> YouTube will go, copyright claim. But then they don't do anything about it. So don't tell YouTube. Anyway, yeah. uh, but, but they're out on Facebook and on YouTube. If people haven't seen them or if they have a platform they prefer, because some people aren't Facebook people and some people are YouTube right. people. But you can find them either place. And I post them as quick as I get them. So, and sometimes I harass you and go, where's the video? But that's, I, <laughs> that's just how I roll. I have, listen, I have to go check the YouTube page to see if I've sent you the most recent one. But I think oh, I, I see. I think you did. I, I got one yesterday. So, so yesterday, how did you get the idea? To, to, how did you get the idea to do this? Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. I'm trying to remember how we got. <laughs> I think somebody must have suggested it to me, but I don't know who. I'll. Well, maybe Kathleen will remember that. I don't remember. I don't remember how it happened, but it just started. And then I don't, you know, and I'm just not, there's no recording equipment involved. It's an iPhone. That's it. And, you know, that's just fine. So the funny thing is that when I started posting them, you know, YouTube likes to tell you, well, if you like this, you'll probably like this other thing. And I've been seeing a lot of other performers doing video. I'm seeing the insides of their houses. So oh, I don't yeah. know who started it, uh, but have you watched any of that stuff? Have you watched anybody else's? Oh, sure I have. Yes, I have. And I guess maybe I did it because, you know, I don't remember why I did it, but I think there was a specific reason. Um, sure, I've, I watch other people's. I mean, you know, it's fun to hear people do songs. I know a lot of people, a lot of people are doing it because it's, um, well, I think the reason that everybody, the people who are doing it are doing it is because it feels good to sing and play and it's a, just an unspeakable blessing that the thing that feels good to do turns out to actually be helpful to people, which is just astonishing and beautiful. And who wouldn't want to do it? 
I've, I've really been enjoying and I go down rabbit holes and I'll watch somebody's and then it'll link me to somebody else's and somebody else's. And right. I, I like to see people's kitchens. So that's also <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we've seen a lot of them. We have seen a lot of them. We have. So how do you come up with what songs to do? Is it what you're in the mood for? Is it a lot of requests? Where does it come from? There are a lot of requests and I try to write them down and make a note of them. Um, they come from comments. I try to read all the comments that come in. And I have two Facebook pages, or I have a bunch. I don't understand how that works. But I have one, that, the official musician one, that I don't even think I can do anything to that one. But Tony can. So he posts the videos on that one. And then I have the one that I'm posting them on. And then there's another one, I think. I don't know. But um, I just, so I read the comments. And if there are requests, and I feel like the song is appropriate for that day, it has to feel appropriate for that day and appropriate for the mood I'm in and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I just have to really feel like singing it, but that's not hard to do. It's not hard to feel like singing. If you're in your kitchen and you get to do the whole thing in your sweatpants, yeah, baby. Right, that's pretty awesome. So yeah. how 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 are you and Kathleen doing? As have your, I mean, you you live out there in the in the woods basically, and you got your dogs and you got your sweetie and everything. So has your life changed a lot or a little, or what's what's yeah. life like for you right now? The biggest difference well, we don't see anybody. That's a huge difference. We were accustomed, we've been going for the last two years, uh, four mornings a week to the, to the Y, to uh, two our aerobics classes and two our yoga classes. And we are doing, starting to do those online now because you can do them online. And the biggest change is how much I miss all my friends from the Y. I really do. I just, um, you know, I had become really, I really love a lot of these people at the Y. So we, we miss them a lot. Otherwise, um, for me, I'm, you know, I'm not working, which is, uh, you know, pleasant. I'll be 69 this summer, so the idea of not working isn't exactly foreign to me. And I'm enjoying it a whole lot. I miss people. I miss Kenny White a whole lot. I talk to him, but I haven't, of course, seen him in a long time. And I miss all my friends. I miss everybody. I miss my family. But um, it's because we're fortunate enough to have we have 40 acres, it's mostly woods, but we get to be out in it, and Kathleen gets to be out in it, which, boy, does she really need that, because she's used to having a lot of alone time, and now I'm like, always right here, so uh, <laughs> she spends a lot of time out in the woods, which works out great, because the dogs are out in the woods all day, and the, pu the puppy, now there's a guy who has an idyllic life, he came to this house, and like the day after he got here was the day they announced all the, you know, stay-at-home stuff, and so he's just this little puppy whose mothers are home all the time, always. We're just with him all the time, and uh, we're delighted. So someday you'll have to leave the house, and he'll be very confused. He'll be like, yeah. What? You're leaving for days at a time? Yeah, that's right. Well, we don't. We won't leave for days at a time. If we leave for days at a time, we don't go unless it's a place we're taking the dogs with us for the most part. Um, right. But we. Um, I mean, he'll be. He'll be fine. But he's been spoiled by. He hasn't met a whole lot of people, but he's, his mothers are with him all the time, and he loves Finn, the big dog. He just loves him to pieces, so that's adorable to watch. Is that the extent of the pets at this point, the two dogs? At this point, there are no cats, which is just unbelievable, but I have so many close friends who are allergic to cats, I still can't believe it. Um, but, yep, just two dogs. It'll be I mean, a in a year or so, maybe. I don't know what I'd do without the cats, but I don't have the dogs, so it's all balanced, you know. It's like, I was looking there's another, uh, there have to be other beings living in your house. And yes. just, to remind yes. you, just to remind you of how limited you are. Because, <laughs> well, I mean that. I, they, they do remind you of how limited you are. And how much, and how capable you are of loving things. They remind you of all that stuff. So I guess part of the answer to this question would be the dogs, but what are you doing to stay sane since you're missing your people? And I guess you can exercise on your own if you want, but what, do you, what are you doing to keep your brains active? Well, there might be a school of thought that would be somewhat respected that would question whether I have stayed sane. And I would be <laughs> certainly willing to hear that argument. Uh, <laughs> I, we go on walks, um, and then we go on walks, and... Um, I just hang out and I smoke a little pot. I do like to smoke pot. Um, so I do that, but not till later in the day. And um, I'm not finding it difficult. I play guitar a lot. Kathleen's out of the house a lot. We just, we keep busy. I don't, I don't think either one of us is having a, 
problem feeling like we're bored. There's plenty to do here. And it's, it's springtime in New England, so it's, you know, chilly, but getting warmer. And we've got a lot of property we can be out on, walking around on stuff. So, and the, the puppy takes up a ton of time. And I'm old now, so, you know, I never have any idea how long anything takes anymore. Anyway. Does Kathleen put you to work? Do you have to do stuff around the place? And She's pretty much getting her rake leaves or... <laughs> My main job in the household is uh, dishes, and they, they are entirely mine, and I insist that they're entirely mine, because Kathleen's really good at a lot of things, but dishes, no. And um, <laughs> I, I actually do get all the food off the dishes. That's, that's a, just a, it's just a quirk with me. I get all the food off. So I do a lot of dishes, but she does all the cooking, and we, you know, we spend a whole lot of time rolling around on the floor making out with the dog. And um, it's just beautiful, and reading, and walking around on property you know it's terrible now that i think about it what the hell have we been doing we haven't been watching television <laughs> we haven't been watching television very much like television i don't almost no matter what it is it's like there's tvs on. i just don't I, I have a hard time staying um interested in television I, I wish it were otherwise we watch the pbs news hour every so often when we feel we must watch the news like we did. You, you've night. joined the PBS NewsHour demographic is what you've <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah we, that is the only one we watch. And we watch it probably, we started watching it five nights a week, but it's just too depressing. I think it's a wonderful news broadcast. I really like it, but news is depressing. But we try to keep up with the, you no, know, it's not so much the political news, but the other news. Well, I was gonna ask you about what you were watching and what you were reading, because that has been another thread through all of this is that people wanna tell us here are some good books, here are some good things to watch, here are some good things to listen to. So you're not watching much, but what are you reading? I start, I read it, I started reading that, the story of Edgar Sawtell book, and I loved it, and then I stopped reading it because I was afraid it would get sad, and I, I can't bear sad animal stories, but then a friend said, oh no, 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 you must finish it, it's absolutely, it's absolutely great. So I was mostly finished when she told me that, so I've decided I would just start over and read the whole thing because I really, uh, and I love the writing. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. Are you a paper book person or do you read on an iPad or a Kindle or anything? All my life I've been a huge, serious reader. I just, I loved reading. And then I, I got a Kindle and I noticed in the last few years that I just wasn't reading. I'm hardly ever reading. And I think it might be because I missed books. So I'm back to books. I'm very glad I have the Kindle because if you're traveling, there's nothing like it. I mean, you, nobody, because I like to read a series. I love a big fat series. If George R. R. Martin ever finished that whole series, I would read them all again. Just, I didn't like the t TV show, but I loved the series, which I can't even think of the name of it now. Oh, the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. That was, a, yeah. that was, a, I'd reread the whole thing again, but um, how'd I get on George R. R. Martin? Not that Because you're re saying you're reading series of books, so you. Yeah, I like to read a series, you know, yeah. like I, the whole reread the whole Harry Potter and all that. So that's a Kindle comes in handy if you're traveling for that reason, because you don't want to take a big book with you on the road. Or right. So, and it's easier to get new books now, right? Because you could just download oh, whatever you want. Right. Right. Although we are very much into, we have, there's a bookstore in Providence we like to go to, and there's another one in Barrington. So we are pretty much trying to not buy books online unless, I mean, if for the Kindle, that's different, but we try to just go out and buy our books at, these two bookstores that we really treasure that are, you know, near our house, sort of. So now that you can't go out, at least temporarily, are you, like, shy of books, or do you have a stack waiting for you, or? Oh, no, my God, no, we got, we got ourselves a lot of books. We got, I think, five <laughs> bookcases now. I'm looking at a huge bookcase now. It's the whole wall of the dining room. We got, there's no shortage of books. Kathleen's been reading a ton of really, of yoga books. She's been reading Margaret Renkel, who's a wonderful writer, writes for the New York Times, and oh, we, we got all kinds of great books around here. A person could go for 40 years and not read all these books, probably. So, no, how about uh, music? Are you listening to other music, or do, what's, your, what's your relationship with listening to music in general? That's an interesting question. I am um, a difficult person to live with in that regard. If there's music on that I don't want to hear, it's just intolerable to me. And that is, and Kathleen really likes to have music on. So we have compromised in that in the morning, usually when I get up, she gets up for me usually. There's classical music on, which is, you know, sometimes I don't, 
I don't love all classical music, but I generally like it. I like music, but it, so that if, but if it's a, another person singing and I don't feel like hearing that, it just, well, anyway, we've compromised and she's, um, it's, you know, we listen to a lot of classical music and I, I if there's music on, then that's what I'm doing whether I want to be or not, whether I like it or not. If I don't like it, I can't ignore it. I can't not. You just grab your brain. Right. I mean, I can stare yeah. at something for three days and not see it. And <laughs> so, and so it never, if something is, is visually unattractive, I probably won't even notice it. Kathleen is really visual and me less, but we listen to music. We were listening to a uh, Davy White. I can't remember the name of the, the people that sing Davy White. I'll look that up. Maybe. I'll find that. Oh, I don't know who it is. Somebody can look up. They, they're wonderful. The something sisters. The, Do you something. feel the need to keep up or know what's going on in certain not genres of music? No. Of course not. Of course not. I, I have a lot of people in my age group who will say, oh, you know, music today. And I'm like, people in it, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll be 69 this summer. Most of the pop music that's being made now isn't being made for 69 year olds. And it's not, it doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's not for me. And I'm happy that there are young people who are get, hearing music that's, you know, thrilling them. And that's great. And that's how it's supposed to be. And I'm, we're still enjoying listening to, well, there's so much music to listen to now with all the cool streaming things. And you can, can hear all kinds of people you never heard before. So that has been really fun. And, uh, but I don't listen to a lot of music. I, I don't. I, um, I'm more inclined to, go play guitar than I am to listen to a record. Unless I'm driving, in which case I might listen. Because it's harder to play guitar when I'm driving. Yeah. It's a little harder. It gets bumpy. <laughs> it gets a little bumpy. But I, I don't know. Size of the car, maybe, you know? I mean. Sometimes music, especially if it's, you know, singer songwriter it just remind it just almost reminds you of working. You, you, you get your work head on, and you don't want your work head on when you're mm -hmm. driving down the road. You know what I mean? Right. So what about, that's a good segue though, what about writing songs? You're playing guitar, do you feel motivated to write anything new? Well, I was fiddling with some chords, a little strange little lyric that I just started singing today, but who knows, I, I never, I never have any idea if I'm gonna write songs or how that works or why. I just find myself writing a song when I do and I don't write anything like as much as I used to. I have recently been looking in old songbooks and I used to really write Oh my God, you know, 50, 60 songs a year. Not that I would call all worth hearing, not at all. But now, sometimes I only write one, one a year or three, four a year, but I'm not looking the gift horse in the mouth. Um, it's, everything is no doubt as it should be. And I'm, I feel really in love with music. And a big part of that has been doing these videos. It's just- You've been playing pretty old songs too. I mean, it's yeah, not just- I'm blessed. It's great. I'm, Blast. I love doing it. I loved hearing Rolling By the other day because I feel like because we put that on your no previous record a while back and so I sort of smiled and said oh my god that's that's a great song that I remember hearing a very old recording of and I'm glad it's still out there for people. You're right Shelly you're you're putting that I'm on I'm not that. taking credit I'm just saying it has a thing that happened you know you made you gave me the tapes. So. Yes that being on that CD made Kathleen fall in love with it and she would always beg me to play it and I never would because it just was so old so then when we were out Kenny and I were out in Seattle recording doing the show that turned out to be the entire whole live record I did it that night because um because I knew it was going to be a record and then she'd have it but I really enjoyed doing it um the other day it was one of the ones I've enjoyed doing the very very most I really had a good time I, I try really hard to only do one take and that has happened on every song except um, maybe Unworthy or one of the ones where we did like, I don't know which one it was. I think it might have been Unworthy because we left the, the You said you missed a verse on, verse on that. So you at least decided the, the yeah. take was good enough. No, it, so. wasn't, it wasn't that one. I don't know which one it was that we did. Um, I, can, I can look on my phone and find out. I don't know which one it was that we did. Um, but mostly you're doing them one take, so that's... Oh, I mean, it's kind of a rule for me. It's a bit of a rule. Yeah. I, don't, I only want to do one take. And if I have to do more than one take, that ain't right, because that's the whole point. 
I think, oh, I think it might have been Howl at the Moon. But no, it was probably Unworthy. It probably was. And yeah, probably I did. That, that probably was the one I forgot. Uh, it's definitely the one I forgot the verse. But it was, I had to do it three times because the dogs were in the way and driving me nuts. I don't know which one it was. I already forget which one it was. I seen a couple of YouTube videos of people doing songs with their guitars and their dog just lies at their feet. So your your dog's a puppy, so I guess it can't be expected no. to do that. Yeah, Dix is not gonna lie at my feet. And I am also, I am a real, uh, I am fanatically careful with my guitars. I just, I am, I'm nuts. I just love them there. I love them. And, uh, and I won't have a guitar around the, the puppy. I mean, if, unless Kathleen's also also in the room because there's nothing I can do to keep him from, I'm not going to ever do anything to hurt a puppy or anything. So if he came at me and I had the guitar, I'd have to hope for the best. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, he's too, he's, you know, he's big looking, but he's only, today is his 17th, when, is this Tuesday or Wednesday? What is Tuesday. It? Tuesday, no one knows anyone. This is 17th Tuesday in his life. Yep. This is today. <laughs> wow, I've never heard anniversaries called that quite like that. But <laughs> I'll bet you that that is the first time you ever heard that sentence today. Is this yeah, it's true. I noticed that. Save his life. Almost every day you'll hear a sentence you've never heard before. I've started to notice that. That was the I kind of thing I noticed when I was a little kid, and I would annoy my mother, and I would say, "I've never said this word before," and she'd say, oh, right. "Go away, go away." <laughs> oh, that is yeah. That is fun stuff. I'm scarred. <laughs> oh, now, what are you doing? Are you able to do, you're still able to do all your work, right? I do. Well, I do my job. I have, I've had a day job for about the past three years working for a statewide public radio show. And we basically do it from all our various homes. Although what's great about it is when you hear the show, it doesn't really look like it. Wow, that's our host amazing. goes in, but most of the rest of us stay home. We have at least one Zoom meeting a day. So I'm used to seeing people in little windows on my computer screen and talking to them. And I, I care about dumb stuff like what's behind me in my office and how much light. I, I actually care about video, which irritates the hell out of me because I don't really want to be the person that worries about what my video looks like. Well, I, I hear you. And, and boy, I'll tell you, Zoom... I don't know some you know who owns Zoom or whatever, but I, boy, I mean, I had never heard of Zoom before. Now everybody's on Zoom, and we're Kathleen and I are doing two family Zoom meetings a week, and uh, and I and we're all and everybody's talking about why would people if it turns out that you can attend a lecture at a college or something via Zoom as opposed to get in your car and drive down there? Why wouldn't you? I wonder how. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much of this will will change the way we all live on a daily basis. I don't know. I thought about that too. The, the other thing I think about is because I'm a computer nerd and I usually know about stuff like this or pay attention. This is, Zoom is not the first, but there have been many things about computers that have sort of become known to everyone that used to only right. a few of us knew. Yes. It's yeah. totally like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I'm sure that's true, but everybody knows Zoom now and yeah. I guess it's not that different than FaceTime. I, I don't, I mean, I have FaceTimed a few times with people, but Zoom felt different. Maybe it's because it was on the iPad, not the phone. Well, and yeah. there are little things about the interface of it that make it easy for you. I mean, you just hit a link. Like with FaceTime, you got to get the right number. You got to hold your phone usually if you're not using the iPad. And yeah. Zoom makes it easy. And we have like 12, we call them the Brady Bunch because we have like 12 people all stacked up right. in little squares. Right. Most of the people in those groups, all they know is to click the link. And right. because it's so easy to do. And then you can do things like share screens, which we don't do, thank God, because I just would rather look at, and it's funny because I'm not a very visual person. It's like, you're talking about how Kathleen, you and Kathleen were different in terms of visual versus you know, audio or whatever. And I'm not a very visual person, but seeing the human faces on the Zoom screen has really been important in keeping my sanity, you know? <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Well, we did one of our family calls. There were 10 of us on the, on the uh, call. And, it, you know, it just was great. It was just, it was as close as we're going to get to see in the family. And we loved it. Yeah. And they get to see the dog. And the dog yeah. is moving yeah. around. It's not just a picture you sent them, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's a... Uh... Boy, I'll tell you, man, I'm old and I'm, 
it's fun being old and having all this new technology and being so blown away. <laughs> It is, yeah, it's cold. It's very cold. I love it. My mom is 90. She's got an iPad. She she complains about it all the time, but she likes having it. <laughs> I don't even have an iPad. I don't have, this is Kathleen's iPad. I don't have one. I just, I just use my phone for everything. You could probably get one if you wanted one. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> you got one in the house. You'll be fine. You know, you know why I don't? I, I think I know why I don't. It's because I'm not a visual person. I don't care about the size of the screen that I'm looking at. It doesn't make any difference to me at all. It right. makes a huge difference to Kathleen. So I think that's it. I get can it. You do, I can you get do it. Zoom on a telephone? You can, I, yeah. I mean, you like, it was funny because when I wanted to, was testing this out, because of course I had to rehearse before we did this today, I got yeah. Frank in the other room on his phone. Oh, hi, so Frank. We're, He's not here now, but where you are right now was a little vertical window that represented his tiny little phone. And because oh. he can't keep still, he walked through the whole house while we were doing this. Oh my so God. I got to see the cats and I got to see the ceiling oh. fan. And <laughs> you know, I have a friend, I want to tell you this. You can edit this, right? You can edit this video, right? Sure, yes, I can. Right. I have a friend who has these two kittens that he rescued and these kittens, don't have eyes. Neither kitten has eyes. They just, you, you wouldn't know it when you looked at them right away yeah. because you think their eyes are closed. Anyway, these little kittens, I mean, he, he's posted videos. He's been up working in his attic in a, in a space where there, are, you know, the space between the floor joists or whatever you call it is just like paper. You can't really walk up. And the kittens are fine. They're walking around. They jump from rafter to rafter. They behave completely normally. You would not know that they don't have eyes. They, they catch mice, they catch bugs. <laughs> and no, and it, isn't it just astonishing? I just, I I just think they'll be just... friends with each other forever though. I bet a big part yeah. of their socialization is that they oh, each other. Sure I mean, he got them both to have them together. He's just this wonderful, sweet, gentle guy that is so mm, full right. of Really, really. It's just adorable. I forget the cat's names, but it's very cute, but I forget what they are. Yeah, names are very important. Yeah, so when are you going to, oh, so you, you're, I was going to ask you when are you going to get cats, but you said you have friends who are allergic. Well, that's no Well, I do, but I want, <laughs> of course I want cats. I've always wanted cats. And, uh, and I have, and I've, you know, I've had a lot of cats and I'm, I'm, there's no way I'm going to not have another cat. I just don't know when. It'll be a boy cat because boy cats, I can make boy cats fall down if they just see me. My boy cats love <laughs> So much that when they see me, they fall down and I have to go over and make out with them. And I'm, I can always get a boy cat to be crazy about me. I have all boy cats right now. I didn't oh, for a long time, are. but yeah, they're great. And, and two of them are tabbies and they're oh. just the sweetest things like ever. And one of them is a big fluffy sort of Maine Coon-like cat, but he's oh, yeah. mine. Like he, he bonded with me because oh, he was weird when we got him. And I lay on the floor for like two days and talked to him before he came right. out. And so for 10 years, he's been my best friend. He's just like, I'm oh. surprised he's not sitting behind me because that's where he usually sits. Well, I, I am uh, just a huge lover of cats. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, let's see. So you're, you're saying you've got everything you need out on the 40 acres. You're not having to work too hard for your dinner. Um, what are you mm -hmm. most looking forward to when they open the doors and let you out? Seeing the people I love, seeing my close friends um, that I haven't seen for so long, who, you know, live nearby, but I can't, I, the first thing that came to me was my friend Diane Vincent, who's a person I love and I haven't seen her for a long time and I want to see Diane and Casey. I just, that'll be the thing that, you know, seeing my friends, I'm, because I'm doing the videos, I don't feel at all like I miss work. And um, I wouldn't be inclined to do a concert online. That I would just do what I'm doing, just do a song. You know, most days I do a song, and uh, so I guess I'm I'm looking forward to not being afraid, uh, as we all are a little bit, as we wonder where this is going to go. I'm looking forward to the world going back to. I'm looking forward to us being better. I don't know where that's going to quote go back to unquote. I don't know. Uh, I mean, in a way, it's good for the planet that all of us humans are just cutting it out and being quiet and not stinking the joint up constantly. So I can hope for the planet that it, that can go on for a little while. But of course, I can't hope that because I don't want people, people need to work. It's, you know, I've never experienced anything like this. None of us have. It's crazy. 
and it's hard to predict how yeah I mean, there's already starting to write think pieces about what the world is going to be like right when this is over but i don't think we really have any idea i mean you can guess about things but i agree with I mean, you. people people are talking about how like we were talking about before how work is going to be different are you going to go to offices mm -hmm. are you going to go to schools but we don't know i mean there's all sorts of interests that have their own ideas about what should happen nope. that we may not control so. i think there's a very good chance that i won't do another show in this calendar year because that is a pretty close circumstance for people to be sitting in the audience of a mm -hmm. book music show. and um i would not be inclined to uh you know to expose myself or a room or, or an audience to that so i don't know what's going to happen and if and if i don't go back to work in 2020 then when am i going to go back to work when i'm 69 or 70 i don't know i don't know had you Remain. been thinking about retiring or you want to keep going for a while or do you even just play it by ear? Oh, of course I've thought about it. I have to, as an aside, because I just said it, every time I say remains to be seen, I think it would be a great name for a funeral home. Sorry. Just, <laughs> um, oh, a terrible time to make that joke. Uh, what were we just talking about? A second ago. Are you, have, you, have you thought about retiring before, well, either course, before this or after? Since this of before. course I have, because I like doing shows, but yeah, I hate traveling now. I hate it. I just, I don't want to get on airplanes. I can do the driving, but I can't do the driving as, I mean, I drive fine, but I used to, I live about six hours from Philadelphia and I used to, if I had a, just a one off in Philadelphia, get in my car, drive to Philadelphia, do the gig, get in the car, come home. No, I couldn't do that anymore. And I wouldn't, it would be irresponsible of me to even try to do that. I would drive to Philadelphia and get a hotel and do the gig. So I can't pretend that I miss any of that. Um, but then there are certain gigs I do where I think, well, I'm definitely going to do that gig again. You know, gig right near my house, the, Na the Narrow Center for the Arts in Fall River. I mean, it's five miles from the house. There are certain venues I love that I imagine I'll, I'll play again. But then there will come the day when it's the last time I did a show. So who knows when that'll be. But I can still do a... I mean, if I wrote a song like right now, once I had it down well enough, I felt I could do it, I'd just put it on the... You know, i just do it on... You, on uh, I'd send it to you is what I'd do. I'd do it and send it to you. Well, there you go. That's what we want, just is to put, have all the music on YouTube. But uh, yeah. how about another, would you ever make another record again, do you think? I doubt it at this point. I don't have that much material, I don't think. I might have close to enough for another record. But these days, you wouldn't actually bother to make a record. I mean, you just release it. That's and, true. You just make, make a couple yeah. songs and put them out. Right. And, I'm figuring out would, how to actually get any money for them, considering that they're all on streaming services. I don't even pretend to know how that works. It's yeah, I don't understand any of that stuff. And I am, I don't, if I didn't make a whole lot more money, I would be all right. Um, we don't really want a lot of fancy stuff. We own our house almost entirely. The bank owns a little tiny bit of it, but not much. Uh, so I don't, you know, I, there are people in the world who are so desperate right now. I've had a lot of people ask me if they could, set a contribution or something and i do not need that i it's not i'm not trying to suggest that we're rich but we're okay we're we're okay we we're not uh in any kind of a dire circumstance and there are so many people who are so i don't you know i am just fortunate that we're okay and i hope all those people who are in dire circumstances can find help and so as far as as me making money i don't care so much about that and making another record who knows and i would if i'm going to do any kind of a recording thing it's going to have to be with kenny white or i wouldn't probably do it because i just don't know anything about it and he knows everything kenny white knows how's everything. kenny doing oh well he knows everything <laughs> i miss him i haven't talked i talked to him I, like a week ago or so um and i was just thinking i would probably call him you know tomorrow or something i know he's all right because with we're very close so no news is good news you know that but uh, yeah, he's fine. I mean, they're both fine. He and Angie are just hanging in their apartment. What are you gonna do, right? Reading a lot, I guess. It's good when you like the place you live these, these times. Yeah, and that's where we, <laughs> we're very lucky there because we got a lot of space here. And Kathleen's been so happy working in the woods. She's really, and you should see it. She's like made this little park. We have a vernal pool down in this one part of the property. A vernal pool is a, it's a, little body of water that is usually spring fed that has water in it sometimes but not always it'll dry up in the middle of the summer and it's very good for bird habitat and things like that because there's no fish in it 
because it's not a permanent body of water. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's beautiful and it's full of skunk cabbage right now. And that is just the most gorgeous, you, it, it's so green. Skunk cabbage does, there's something in its root system that actually heats up the plant. And there's a reason that it comes in first in the woods because it's actually provides its own heat. And it's beautiful. It, you, it sounds, it's an ugly name for it, but it's a beautiful looking plant and it doesn't smell like anything unless you break the plant and it smells like skunks. I got nothing against it. See, skunks. I've learned something now. I know nothing about plants and skunk cabbages and things like that. Well, I only know that because we, we have a lot of wooded property and Kathleen is um, in some state biology programs where, and she's in one right now where most of our uh, wooded property, which is, I don't know, 20 some acres, uh, is we're working to have it be really good bird habitat, hence the vernal pool and all this and that. So cool. she's, yeah, it's, you, and she's, it, they, the state biologist came through and he's excited about the property and says he thinks it's going to attract a whole lot of different kind of birds and stuff. So that's what, she, that's how Kathleen's spending her time while I'm hanging around the house playing guitar. Doing the dishes. Playing guitar, yeah. doing dishes. Playing guitar, <laughs> right, right. Kissing the dogs. All right. Well, Cheryl, this has been great. Thank you so much for taking some time to chat with the list. And again, for all the songs, everybody loves them. They're super excited. I get lots of notes, comments on YouTube and just notes from, to me personally. And people that people always write to me and think I'm you. So every for everybody that's ever said, thanks, Cheryl, to me, I'll just say thanks, Cheryl, to you. Well, thank you. And thank you very much. And hi, list. Bye, everybody.